It's a great call by FX Tool. It says um, bossing is a risk of everything, so that you can respect yourself for the rest of your life. Magic time, baby! Oh! good You know, when you live for this and you put all your heart and desire into this, you're really risking everything. You could be damaged mentally, you could be damaged physically. You go all the way to the point of dying, you know. And then there's other risks that you wouldn't necessarily think of when it comes to boxing unless you are a fighter where you're risking your own pride, you're risking uh, your worth for the rest of your life, you know what I'm saying? Because should this fail, where do you go? Paulie, like I say, whip his motherfucking ass, you know what I'm saying? Tonight's young night. It's time to shine tonight. You want to shine? Make it happen tonight. You want to shine like you want to? Because I know you want to. This is it. You live. You can't get any shine on this, brother. So come get it. Get it. Tonight is the night, baby. To become world champion. Lord, took Paulie a long, tough road to get here. Tonight's his night. Please watch over him, Lord. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Shelves he's peeled, but I just can't help the way I feel like I can relate to the anger and the temperament the shady portrays. It's like the rush I get when someone fucks on my shit. That rush of confidence when I'm at the end of my wits and head all I can stand. Some mouthy fingers trying to pretend he's a walking psychopath when he's with all of his friends. The top of talking is lost that goes on. My rationality, the whiskey shots brought up all my stupid. put all my eggs into this basket where it really was the risk of everything to respect myself for the rest of my life. And I'm there now, man. I'm, I'm at that world title fight stage. So uh, I risked it all and I'm, I'm this close to getting everything. This close to being able to respect myself for the rest of my life. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to the world's most famous arena, Madison Square Garden in New York City. It's time for the November 23rd, 1980, the day I was born. A star was born on that day. <laughs> it's probably Malinaji. But nah, I'm the real. It was, uh, that was my birthday, and I'm 25 years old now. And uh, a, lot, a lot of things have happened since then. I've lived in a lot of places, especially early in my life. Um, it seemed like my parents couldn't really figure out where they wanted to live, whether it would be here or whether it would be in Italy. We lived most of the time in Italy, but my father, being a soccer player, uh, tried to travel all over the place, really, to, to get work. 
And then, um, you know, once he uh, stopped playing soccer, we ended up coming here, and that's when he left. Things just got a little bit tough, you know. We ended up uh, having to be on welfare because, you know, my mother didn't speak English. We couldn't get, really get work, you know. My mother, when she remarried with my stepfather, I think she wanted to make life easier on all of us, you know. And um, I believe she had the best intention in mind, and, you know, things just didn't work out. I was still young. I was nine years old when my mother got remarried, so I thought I was going to have a father figure like somebody teaching me to grow up as a man. It wasn't like that, man. I mean, I'm not, gonna, I'm not the kind of guy that holds grudges for a long time, but, you know, there was, uh, there was a lot of things that could have been done differently, and they weren't. The boy I was yesterday made me the man I am today. I wouldn't change it for nothing, but um, if I think about it hard enough, I still get mad, you know? I, I still, it, it really irks me. Me and my brother were always close. We uh, we kind of knew we were the outcasts in the house. That's how we felt, you know. So it it kind of became like us against him, you know. And, and like, you know, my mother a lot of times took his side. I don't know for what reason. Maybe because she didn't want division in the house, and she thought maybe he could lead the house the right way. But the guy's not capable of leading the house at all. You know what I'm saying? The guy was wrecking everything. If you got to take your frustrations out on on two kids that don't know any better and make their life hell growing up, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, to me. You ain't a man. <laughs> a real man doesn't step to women. He doesn't step to young children. He doesn't try to intimidate women and children. A real man, if he's undergo a task, he wants to take on something greater than him, bigger than him, stronger than him. Can I conquer it? Can I defeat it? You know, those weren't any of his intentions. Summer of 96, finally, you know, it all boiled over, man. You know, he was doing his thing. He was going to throw me Humberto beating. For whatever reason it was, and we jumped him, man. We jumped him good. The house got all messed up. And uh, he told uh, my mother that she, he wanted us out. Pretty much the only male figure I can remember having, you know, is my grandfather when I moved back here at 15, you know. It's my grandmother and my grandfather. I uh, lived with them before I moved out on my own. And um, they've been taking care of me. And then now I rent the apartment from them. I pretty much try to look at his example as a, as a male a, a figure and as a man, you know, and I try to become a man through his example. No è una cosa buona, non è proprio da quella che Noi ci contendessi che siamo stati, deve ricevere mio nipote, perché non è che potevo lasciare il mio nipote fuori, il mio nipote subito l'ho ricevuto, senza problemi, senza, senza problemi, e l'ho ricevuto senza niente. My baby grandson. Okay. How much do you guys love your grandson? Ah, sì. Excuse me? Quando, quando vuoi bene a Toronto? Oh, I'm much in love, I forget about it. Uh, <laughs> I'm more, more big the wall. <laughs> more big the wall. Back in the days when I was a teenager. This right here, this school right here is when I went to high school. Uh, back when I moved back to Brooklyn, Nutrick High School, and it brings back a lot of memories. Um, not always such positive memories. We started like losing a conscience in that way. You know what I'm saying? I used to carry knives on me. No figures, knives. Uh, I had a gun on me. I used to take it to school, you know. And eventually, like I said, they got tired of me, threw me out. Like I thought they would just threaten me with that. I didn't think they would actually throw me out of the school, you know. And so I was angry. I was like, man, I can't believe I just got thrown out of the school. I can't even go back in, you know. When Paolo l'hanno buttato fuori dalla scuola, io lo l'ho portato con me a lavorare. Yeah, I guess just to keep me out of trouble, keep me like out of the street and keep me just from doing nothing pretty much. So he would just say, all right, go sit down and lay on the couch over there in the house we were laying on. And I would just do nothing all day. And I would tell him like, well, yo, you give me $10 a day over here. What, what do you want? He's like, yeah, but you don't do nothing. Yeah, I don't do nothing, but I'm also wasting an entire day every single day of my life. I don't want to do this. La decisione l'ha fatto lui. Lui l'ha fatta la decisione perché tutti i giorni mi piangeva che voleva essere scritta alla box. Di farlo di scriverlo in un'altra scuola, calcio, football, baseball, ma no, ma no, ha pugilato, ma no ha pugilato. Poi lui ha insistito e lo, ho chiamato mio figlio e l'ho fatto scrivere. So you had my uncle take me to the gym. Now whoever has courage and a strong and collected spirit in his breast, let him come forward, lace the gloves, and put up his hands. Paul came here when he was a youngster. He was just a tough kid from Brooklyn. He uh, was getting into trouble in school. He was getting into trouble in the neighborhood. And um, he thought it was about time he did something for himself. So he came into police and gym. I think they had more in mind that they were gonna, I was going to get my ass kicked and stop boxing. Or, uh, and just at least teach me a lesson. You know? And it turned out 
that、um, this young man found himself. He found something、uh, that could discipline him. I used to come home and be like, I'm doing good, man. You know, I'm not getting my ass kicked like I, like I, like I was in the beginning. You know,、like、I was like a whole new chapter of my life opened up. You know, I, I found something I liked. I found something that kept me away from the bad distractions, and、um, things、uh, got a little better for me after that. You've been traveling. Don't worry about it, buddy. Throw your hands up. Poi quando l'ho visto combattere prima, la prima volta a Dolettante e ho visto che, che è buono, io pensavo che mi spaventavo, che ci succedeva qualcosa, invece è finita la, la sua vecchia, è finita che me ne voti il primo round, l'ha seduta già volta qua. My grandpa was always very supportive of me boxing.、Um, you know, once he saw me fight and he saw I had talent, you know, I wanted to go and go to my first try and my first four fights. You know, he would always tell people, "No, my grandson's gonna be a champion one day." You know, his eyes light up when he talks about me. Ah, certo, mi sono sentito bene perché io non pensavo che lui ci voleva tanto. Onestamente, io non lo pensavo. Another big motivator is to really make my grandfather proud. You know, to show him that, you know, he brought, he started me doing this and it, and it was worth it. When I first met Paulie, he had just won the U.S. Nationals. And I'd seen him fight in the Golden Gloves, and I knew that for a white kid, this was an unusual fighter. His speed is just unusual, and he appealed to me. But then, when he won the U.S. National Championship after 36 amateur fights, I was like, "This kid's a prodigy." And then Paulie came into my office with the hair spiked up and the cocky attitude and all the confidence in the world, and told me basically he needed to turn pro. He was living on his grandmother's couch, and I didn't know at that moment that the kid could be a champion, but I knew that this kid was promotable, and his promotability. Was like so obvious. I had to sign him. From Brooklyn, New York, Holy Molinaje. Takes it so easily to squeeze me. Easy girl, I've been known to get sleazy. I can take it all the way back to '83 before the government even knew. Generally, white fighters, Mexican fighters, rely more on brawling.、Um, you know, tend to just be tough kids. It's punching power or tenacity that gets them to the top. This kid was all speed. We are inside the venerable Hampton Beach Casino Ballroom as we start this evening with one of the emerging characters of the fight game. The unbeaten Paul Malinaji takes on tough Kevin Watts. Despite his His lack of formal education. The kid is tremendously astute at self-marketing. I'm the flashiest fighter out there. 22-year-old Paul Malinaji goes by the nickname Magic Man. However, his opponents and some fans, they would have other choice names for the Brooklyn fighter. Poorly, it's a love him or hate him kind of fighter. But it's not so important that everyone love you. It's important that everyone know you. Poorly, poorly, that's him. Kevin Watts has no concerns with Paul Malinaji's style. He said. I'll show him that I'm a bull. I will show him that on this night he's going to be in a man's world. Well, he's going to be in a speed world. He better be ready for that speed tunnel. That speed tunnel goes by the name of Malinaji. Best asset is that pure speed from Malinaji. Twice about being aggressive or cocky. Punches in round one. I think he knows who he, who he can, you know, bully and he can talk to, and he knows I'm not one of them people. And there always comes that point. There always comes that point in a Paul Malinaji fight where the opponent starts to react to what Malinaji is doing, and that flashiness and that style. And he knows he can't get under my skin. I ain't going anywhere. I'm gonna be there for all ten rounds. If he makes it, which I doubt it.
welcome you into the dark side of life. Welcome you here tonight. And the talking has begun as the jab continues. As the jab continues to come in, the jaw of Malinaji as active as his left hand. Three, four rounds, exactly the way he wants it. Paul Malinaji feeling comfortable. In between the fifth and the sixth round, a realization by the corner of Malinaji. They all agreed, you know what? He's not strong enough to do what he needs to do on the inside. All right, Teddy, let's set it up for you. Sticking out his tongue, saying, I'm not affected by that jab. But he is affected, and that's why he's sticking his tongue out, Joe. He's frustrated, no doubt. Frustration setting in. Malinaji's laughing. His brain no longer thinks. Speed kills, I guess. The man so cocky is to name himself that. Sit down, cocky. Sit down. Oh, he puts him down. Watch just a moment ago. Stuck his tongue out. Yeah. Jody was frustrated. That means you're not thinking. That means you're going to leave. You guys are dizzy. They best be getting focused. You guys are dizzy, kid. They best be getting focused. You guys are dizzy. They best be getting focused. He's just a super challenge. Try to get me out of here. never met a fighter who loved the camera more, who loved the tension more. I don't blame Malinaji for coming up trying to be flashy and trying to make, a, you know, something for himself. Otherwise, you can go your whole career and not get paid well. Yeah. The thing is, if you're going to sell the sizzle, you got to sell the steak. And Malinaji right there did something that we have not seen from him in his professional career against a guy with a good record, a guy with a lot of pride and an, e and an ego, clearly from the way Watts was fighting and even showboating. Malinaji knocked him out clean. Paulie hasn't fought um, a guy above him in the rankings. He's had a bunch of hand injuries. You know, he's won every fight, and he won most of them as a one-handed fighter. Left jab, left jab, left jab. What's a fighter to do with only one hand? Hang tough, dodge and weave, hit him with another left. But how far can a one-handed fighter go? How far? When I ended up with Paulie Malinaji and my son Frankie asked me to manage him, I knew I had to get him to Dr. Stephen Margles to repair his hands. He was undefeated, but before Sal met him, at least his previous three fights, if not four fights, he essentially fought one-handed. His right hand just hurt all the time. Without the, the surgery, Paulie's career wasn't going to go anywhere. He's got a total of four screws here. Very shortly into his training, he hit the sparring partner's head, and he got this severe pain in his hand. It just shot up his arm. So I started giving him um, anesthetic injections for his sparring. And he got through the training, and then he had his fight at, that was at the ballroom. From the legendary Hammerstein Ballroom in the heart of New York City, we get an opportunity to see the magic man. And that night before the fight, we numbed it up. Malinaji has been having problems, Wally, with his right hand. And the question for the Magic Man, has that right hand healed? Such a charismatic fighter. Here comes Paulie Malinaji and Yelp. Now, Malinaji's had some serious, serious work done. A bone graft, some screws put in. I mean, you're talking about a bionic hand. And he hasn't really used the right hand yet, if you notice. It's been all left, a couple of rights to the body. He went in and he won that fight. Like unanimous. That eight round decision by unanimous decision and still undefeated Paulie the Magic Man Malinaji. I was a little bit less than thrilled because he probably only threw the right hand five times in that fight the next day I get a call from Sal Paulie's got a problem I said what's the problem he says he thinks he's broke his hand so he came in and you can see the broken bone right here see this crack right at the screw head. And because he's got callus there, I know that didn't happen three days ago on the day of the fight. That's probably five weeks, which is when Paulie hit that guy sparring. So Paulie sparred for at least five weeks 
with a broken hand. So we finished this, the second operation, took these pins out, and based on these x-rays, we were able to give him permission to go ahead and, uh, and start fighting again. So he was down about three months, which has to be some kind of a record. We are at Foxwoods in southeastern Connecticut, and it is now time for our main event. Undefeated Paul Malinaji takes on 16-1 and Donald Camarena. Which way will their careers go? Malinaji broke his right hand in each of his last two bouts. The win over Yelton is only fight in the last 14 months. That's due to surgeries. He now says the hand is 100%. That was the first fight to test the new hand. He has a lot of faith in that healed up right hand. They actually put an artificial bone in the right hand of Paul Melanagi. And that one, he used his hand tremendously. Now, touch gloves. Touch gloves, Paul. Thank you. Uh, I gotta survive, even if I take it. Malinaji, who's staying to the fight plan. An interest hand. Goes back to it and sends in a short, very fast right hand that scores. Now that guy was also built as to be as a strong fighter, um, not, not any kind of a pushover. Um, and Paulie made him look like a rank amateur. First round to the last round, there won't be a sound. Let the team step it up if they want to stick around. Paulie Malinaji, a closer look. His boxing idol, Arturo Gatti. I don't know that many boxers. I mean, the only one I know who consistently fights with a broken hand is a Toro Gatti, one of Paulie's heroes. We've heard some call him the lost brother from growing up Gotti, but he's much more Gatti than he ever was Gotti. He had two hands and he was able to do his thing. And he, you know, he beat Camarina, who I have respect for as a good fighter, so decisively that it was almost embarrassing to the other kid. I mean, it was embarrassing. I mean, the guy couldn't touch Paulie. Oh, here we go. I agree with you. Is, the hands is just too much right now. After the last fight, we're confident that he can just let his hands go, and he doesn't have to be hesitant. He doesn't have to second guess his right hand anymore like he used to. And here comes the Foxwoods crowd. Love him or hate him, they love him here because the chant of Paulie has risen up. Talk a lot and jump, but I back it up. If you want what I have, then you gotta step it up, cuz in this game there's only one winner. If you want to come in second, then be a quitter. I gotta survive. And, and Paulie didn't knock him out, but Paulie battered him for 10 rounds. And, uh, and at the end of the fight, the other guy picked up Paulie and held him up. He knew he had gotten beat. And the new WBC Continental America's champion is Brooklyn and New York. Paulie, the magic man. Is 21 and all. Twenty-one down. How many to go? How many hands will blow? Crowds explode. We fight, yearning for that big show. Bob Aram was going to promote this big show at the Garden on the weekend of the Puerto Rican Day Parade. He needed to, someone as a foil to Cotto who could sell tickets. Well, you've got an Italian-American kid who's good-looking, has a big mouth, lives in Brooklyn, and sells tickets. This fight is what uh, boxing, what New York is all about. You have the best fighter in Puerto Rico, Miguel Cotto. An Italian kid from Brooklyn. This is a West Side story being played out in the boxing ring. Is there anybody out there that you fought that fights a similar style to his? No conozco el estilo de Paul. No sé cómo pelea. No me preocupa el apuro. Tengo que prepararme yo, estar ready yo para para el combate. Y él le va a hacer lo mismo. You know, I don't. I never seen him fight. I don't know what kind of style he's gonna bring. I'll find out when I'm in the ring with him. And uh, I mean, I'm just worried about getting myself ready to fight, and he could be doing the same thing. Miguel Cotto, he's got to go out there and make Paulie fight his fight. He's got to have Paulie stand toe to toe with him, and maybe he'll hit Paulie on the chin. Malinacci can't match uh, Cotto for power. Believe it. 22 fights, 22 knockouts. 
Oh yeah, his punching power is something you have to respect without a doubt. You have to respect the fact that he's made all his defenses and won them by knockout. So you have to definitely respect that. But um, like I said, what he does falls into my strengths. And like I said, he's going to be forced to make an adjustment. So he ain't never seen nothing like Paulie Malignaggi. He ain't never going to see nothing like Paulie Malignaggi afterwards, believe me. He might not even see me that night. <laughs> Paulie's got to watch himself. If he don't watch himself, he'll have to get hit in the chin. Uh, Cole can punch. He can really punch. And he can fight. Classic matchup of power versus speed. And speed kills. This is like a bull fight. The matador against the bull. So far, Camarena's been the bull with no horn. And Alanaji has been the matador. Not with a cape, but with those quick hands. Who wins when a matador and a bull go at it? The matador usually wins, you know what I mean? He domesticates the bulls. The matador takes out the bull every time. That's why people come to watch. They want to see the excitement. They want to see the bull try to get his shots in, but he never does. You know what I mean? He never does. That's what going to be doing all night to Mel Gohan all night. You know? Just expect me to domesticate the bull on June 10th. <laughs> Boxers is punching. Every decade, every generation, there's always a puncher that no one can forget about. He's amazing. He hits hard. And what happens? He always loses to the boxer. In the end, the demise of a puncher is always the boxing, and that will never change. That is boxing. I'm not a guy that really goes in there saying, oh, I'm going to knock him out, and that's it. You know, I come in there guaranteeing victory. You know what I mean? Whether it comes by decision, whether it comes by knockout, it doesn't matter to me. My job is to win fights, and that's what I do. I consistently win fights, and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to win the, win the fight, and I'm going to entertain people doing it. He'll dance, he'll sing, he'll do everything in there. He'll put a show on. And that's the type of fighter that will win the fight. That's the type of fighter that can beat Cody. You know what? There's fighters all the time that talk, talk, and say a lot of things, and that never in the ring it never happens. So you know, I'm not worried about it at all. At that, you know, he's not gonna get inside my head. He should be worried getting inside the ring with me. On June 10th, Paulie is getting the opportunity he always wanted. You know, that's I don't fight the fights. I get the kid what they want. Most guys are scared of Cody. That's how they lose, like Tyson. My guy's not scared. My guy's exciting to get to him. He can't wait. This is, a, this is like fun. He believes he's going to be world champion. You can't be any more hungry than Paulie is. You can't be any more confident than Paulie is. And I think on June 10th, he's going to shock the world. I want to say I respect the Puerto Rican people. Um, I have many Puerto Rican friends, but on June 10th, I'm going to beat your champion. Well, I think a lot of people think this fight is... Uh, bit of a mismatch sometimes when they see the knockout ratio uh, on my record. But, um, you know, like Lou just said, the doctor told him that was the worst thing he'd ever seen. And believe me when I tell you, man, I was in a lot of pain for a lot of those fights. So when you see my lack of knockouts, it's not necessarily that the power ain't there. The situation is different now. I'm a two-handed fighter, meaning I can throw two-handed combinations. The thing that aggravated me the most was that, you know, I'm fighting another professional fighter in there that's hurt, trying to hurt me. And I'm beating him with one hand. Instead of giving me that credit, people out there are trying to say, oh, he's like a physical, boring fighter, man. He's just kidding, nobody, or something like that. You know what I mean? That hurts somebody like me because I work real hard in there. I know how hard I work. I'm one of the hardest working fighters you'll ever see. People were saying that kind of stuff. Yeah, it was getting me down. Those days are gone. On June 10th, I think a lot of people are going to have to give me credit. You know what I mean? Uh, I heard the gentleman over here from the garden saying that they want to put Miguel Cotto in here every year. And uh, Miguel Cotto's good for boxing, so you should bring him back every year the night before the parade. But he'll be coming back with one loss on his record. Thank you. I'm just looking for a uh, fuel, you know? Like, I'm just looking to see if Kodo Cold, said anything he shouldn't have said, you know? It says Kodo wants to shut up Malinaji. He's letting me know that uh, I better be prepared to get a good beating like he, like, uh, he did uh, like he did to Gianluca Bronco. And so after eight rounds and a damaging blow to the shoulder, Bronco is forced to call it quits. Cotto wins another victory by technical knockout. Look at this mad young. Dude, he looks like 15, this little kid. Nah, he hasn't. The thing is, he bought this when he was 15. That's the problem. Oh, right, right. <laughs> He's not ODing on the eyebrows? That's Chauncey. Okay, that's like, Chauncey. I, I do my eyebrows, too. That's a little exaggeration. No, that's, yeah, that's exaggeration. No, I met a bitch that looks like that. <laughs> and then we're going to X this one out, and that's what's going to happen in the future. All right? <laughs> that's the this future. is the future. <laughs> All right? That. So today, me and my guys, we got together. We had to go to uh, my boy uh, Tom. He owns uh, Papa's Pizza. Toto wants to you get you get your, you get your sleep. What? To Malinaj. Shut sure. up, Malinaj. Oh, shut up, Malinaj. Okay. Oh, shut up, okay.
I'll have a Diet Coke and, a, and I'll have a glass of Chianti. Uh, glass of Chianti, is that okay with you? Uh, do you have any objection? No, All right, thank you. <laughs> okay, that's right. I was thinking, for example, you know who might be good sparring for this? Santana. Santana's like decent sparring. He's not aggressive enough, though. Santana don't throw punches. Santana don't throw punches. Does he throw enough? He don't throw any punches when he boxes me. You, Billy, you've seen him fox. You know I mean, like, uh, I'll, I'll use him to a certain extent. You want Josh Cloudy? Yeah, yeah, we can do that. What do you want to do, like, for out? You, you want to do that Rome 1960 stuff for outfits? They have that. They have something that they did, like, I don't know if you saw it, like, like this collection with the classic stuff. They did Rome 1960. We put an Italian flag, an American flag on it, put Team Alanagi on the back. That works? Sounds perfect. That's cool. Like the Italian blue? The Italian blue with the three stars for each one. Oh, that's a good idea. I don't know, but I want to wear the same type of skirt. about Lee Samuels, bro. He's giving them, he's giving BS quotes to these reporters, and they put it out yesterday like it was factual, okay? Like Lee Samuels what? called Carl Freite yesterday on Fight News. Let me tell you, okay, that Cotto approached me after the press conference and asked me and said, approached me personally, on a personal level, and goes, um, I'm going out for lunch with my knuckle sandwich. Are you kidding me? Like, I want to hit him with a slap, Lou. Seriously. <laughs> there's business, and then there's on a personal level. If you approach me outside with reporters on and around, you're going to try to be tough with me. You know, I would, I, I'm, I'm not about that. You know what I mean? So tell Lee to stop making up stories to the media. But then the guy, I don't know, the other idiot doesn't even call me and make sure it's factual. He just puts it out like it happens. You know what I mean? So I wound up on fight moves. You know does it really I mean? fucking matter what they put on fighters? Yeah, it does. It looks like a punk when nothing even happens. You don't. You want the motherfucker to underestimate you. You don't want to get anyone fucking riled up. You don't want to just. You you want. He he looks at your record and he sees a guy that can't break the fucking egg. He ain't worried that you're gonna hurt him. You don't want to get him worried that you're gonna hurt him. You want him to look past you, okay? You want him to think that this is an easy fucking fight. So. Use your fucking head and do, do what's in your interest to beat the fucking guy. Not don't be a macho little guinea. I mean, did you get the sense yesterday that the guy was really concerned? No, he didn't seem really concerned to me. Yeah. Keep it that way. Writers are always going to be biased, so you know there's going to be positive things and negative things. We just take that with stride. No, that's it. Sometimes we do get mad. Though. We get a little tight. We yeah, little sometimes tight. I twinkle a little bit. But that's what I got you for. You keep me in check. We know that they try to put a little pressure, but instead we take it like this with a grain of salt, and then we just give lignapis. In Italian, we say lignapis. So silly, yeah. So we're going to give beans. Molly and I are going to be going back to uh, Boston. So uh, Mike Boyle's uh, strength and conditioning program. I was amazed at his attitude and his hard work. I mean, he works 110% every single time he comes in here. Uh, I couldn't ask for anything more from him. Elbows up, elbows up. Last one. Sit back, drive. He needs a lot of balance in the ring. He's constantly moving, ducking under punches. And he's gotten a lot better at that kind of stuff. Okay, left foot in first. We've done a lot of agility stuff, a lot of quick feet. Push, push, push. There you go. Good, good. Push. Nice. There you go. As far as Polly's opponent, I know he's fighting against Cotto. He's gone over a lot of things. We sat down and talked and had conversations about what he really wants to work on. He's a strong left, huh? Yeah, he's natural left. Yeah, I know. He's just switched. It's real strong story. left. Yeah. Speed ends up keeping them from getting their hands off, you know? Yeah. They start to uh, get gun shy. It's tough. It's tough work, Drive. Good. Nice. There you go, Polly. Good. It's gonna pay off in the end, but man, it's hard, man. Tell you, feels aches and pains. She works with me, man. She works with me. You're definitely faster than him. Way faster oh, yeah. than him. The speed is my advantage. Yeah, I, I, I can win the fight just off that. You know? Right. I just feel it in my body overall. I'm much more solid, you know. My body feels more solid. I feel stronger. The balance is like excellent, man. You know what I mean? I can switch directions on my moves, or anything. But it's, uh, a split second, and not lose my balance, you know. So it's gonna come out. Uh, that time, that kind of timing is gonna pay off in the fight. Cause uh. It's gonna throw off Cotto a lot. You think Cotto's doing this? No. You've been around. Cotto ain't doing this. Cotto ain't doing this. Basic boxing you know? skills, basic, probably. Basic, basic boxing skills. We're here because we want to get away from the distractions of being at home and training at home. You have your family and everything else, and it just allows us to be focused more on, on the job and the tasks that we have ahead of us. Trying to stay on the outside, trying to, trying to move like Madalaji move, and he and he cuts, he just cuts the ring off real good. I hit me with uppercut the first time I came down here. Good uppercut, real good. Will he be in? This is my first experience with him. 
He's really very strong and very smart boxing. His opponent can have chance to him, you know. His opponent fast, but Miguel Cotto is very smart and he has a lot of power to him. The way Cotto's cutting off the ring, um, Malamaji has a good jab. He's fast, but I don't think he's going to make it past six. This kid, uh, Poli Munirani, who never fought, no, not really anybody on the same class of uh, Cotto. He's going to put a good fight for the first three, four rounds until the punching on the body is going to take over and he's going to see the way to get out of the ring. We're talking about a champion of the world, you know. It's a different class than boxing. And uh, I hope you the best. He's a nice kid, but in the night of the fight, I feel, I'm going to feel sorry for Molinache. We're going to win. There's no other way to think about it. We're going to go to win. Whether we win by decision or whether we win by knockout, we're going to win. Ah, back in New York. Home sweet home. Love this place. First day back in New York, Gleason's gym. First day working out today. Just got up. Test ourselves, see how sharp we are, see how uh, rusty we are, whatever. Excited to be back. What's up, man? Gleason's gym, man. I've been here for a long time, and it's like a family, man. So, like, everybody got my back 100%. And that's what feels good about training in this place, man. Hey, what's up, Hey, what's up? What's going on? What's up, What's going on? What's going on? Good, man. How you feel? Hey, what's up, man? Good, all right. good shit, good shit. And they know how hard I work, and they see the skills that I got day in and day out, so they know that I got a legit shot in this fight. I feel right back home. I'm psyched. <laughs> Smells great in here. You got all kind of fighters in this gym, man. You know, all kind of good fighters, past, present, current, and even future, you know? So, it's good, man. You just, you just smell fighting when you come in here, you know? It's not an easy job to do to, to keep this protected, but Harry's doing a great job for me. All I know is Harry wrapped my hands, I stopped having problems. You know, between the surgery I had, Harry protected the work that's been done by the doctor. You know, Dr. Margo's fixed the hand, and Harry's protecting that work. I know Paulie from the amateurs and stuff like that. You know, he came a, he came a long way. If anybody don't think Paulie got no heart, or Paulie not up for the test, ask Junior Jones, ask Boom Boom Johnson. Ask Otro Gotti, ask um, um, Juan Guzman. Oh, they're very supportive. They had a lot of love for me. They've seen me come up. Um, they've seen me start from nothing and, and get to the point I'm at now because I've been in Gleason ever since I started. Paulie got hit the rough way and the honest way. They have a, a certain amount of respect for anybody that tries this, you know what I'm saying? And anybody that really puts their heart into it. He's going to upset Cotto. That's what I told Paulie. The next press conference he had, he had with Cotto bring a ball of Beto Bismarck. Let him know he's going to get upset. <laughs> I really feel they're there for me 100%. And that's the first time, first and only time I felt like that in my life. And um, I think I'll always feel that from them, you know what I mean? They see me bleeding there, they see me crying there, they see me sweating there, you know? My gym, they've been supportive through the whole thing for me. Thanks to odds making, everybody can make money off us <laughs> when we win. <laughs> the majority of the people do think I'm not going to win this fight, and everybody's entitled to an opinion, and that's the opinion they're going to have. <laughs> he, he, don't, he, don't, he can't punch backing off. The whole thing is when he's backing up, it's when he's in trouble. Yes. That's why he backs up. He runs. He can't, but sometimes he'll try to land something and back up. Yeah. He can't fight when he's in that backup mode. He got to stop and start going again to fight. He was he a little hot. Fight. Once he gets in that backup mode, he can't fight. He likes it back. He yeah. a little hot. Yeah, yeah. The right hands got to be sharp. They got to be real sharp with this guy. Because the whole thing is the, the, the tie his left hand up. If he got to use that left hand to block, his whole game is gone. Back on that jab, alright. Looking good, looking good. Let him get, get loose, get, get the cranks out. That's all this is about. We got seven weeks, so we don't want to burn him out. The whole thing is to take it to the fight, not to the gym. Looking good so far. Hand speed like, like you've never seen before. Right back. Alright. Every time it's like that, he's a natural. Double in. 
Pop a cup back. Give me two and a cup. It's like a fish in water when he comes in here. You know, he loves it. He's like the he's like the piranha in here. He's everything he can get. He takes the knowledge wise. So there's no problem. Just just cool him. Just gotta keep him cool. I'm not afraid of any man. Paulie's always been ready to fight anybody. He's always wanted to fight anybody and everybody. You know? People <laughs> Now, Lokoto has been up there for a while, and he wasn't looking to ever fight a guy like Paulie. Paulie's style, Lokoto's style, is perfect for each other. Anybody that can actually understand boxing and knows styles knows this is a tough fight. Knows this is a tough fight. Not just for me, just for me, for me, I'll call it also. The boxer is constantly moving, throwing combinations, moving, moving, staying away. Pull it again. And the punch is trying to catch up, trying to catch up. This is good. If he's been kept away from that kind of fighter. So um, I'm the guy that they're, uh, I'm like their guinea pig, so to speak, that they're going to try to experiment with. Flip big. You know, it's me. It just swings back and forth. You kind of just push it along and move your head, slip, slide. You get really creative in the ways you slip punches. I do this a lot. It's one of my favorite exercises. Because it allows you to be creative in the angles you choose and the steps you make and the spin and stuff. And, you know, your mind starts to really get, get really creative. So you see me, in, I'm sorry, it works because you see me in fights slipping punches in awkward ways because I'm constantly doing this in the gym. I try to make it miss the last minute. If you make, if you make, if you make a defensive move too early, you make it for no reason because the guy can catch on. But if you make it miss the last possible instant then that's when the guy you make the guy get the most commit you get the most commitment out of the guy so when he does miss he pays for it you know it's a new junior world junior world to win champion of the world uh, june 10th today we had work to do and uh, now we'll have a little fun tonight fuck come on Yeah, we're going to go watch the fights tonight, Broadway boxing, you know, Lou DeBell puts on a good local New York shows, so we're going to check that out first, so I'm pretty excited about that. Uh, we're just going to go out, hang out with the boys, we got a whole crew going, uh, Paulie's going to go out there and so just fair. promote by being there, you know, we got the fight on June 10th, and that's it, you know, just basically just promote the fight, go out throughout the night, meet a lot of people, see a lot of people, you know, we see at the fights, and uh, just have a good time tonight. I don't think we're going to be going out much after this, this is really a wrap right now. The most what we're going to be doing for fun is just watching fight tapes. This, this is a DVD of Kodo. We got everything. We got Kodo vs. Bazan, Mausa, Kodo vs. Soto. Damn, bro. We know everything about this guy. You know what I mean? It's going to be so sad almost for all the Puerto Ricans. It's okay, though. I already gave the suggestion that we make Paul the Grand Marshal at the Puerto Rican Day Parade after we beat Kodo, <laughs> since he's supposed to be the Grand Marshal. It's not going to work out for them, so... You know, nothing better than have a couple of good-looking guineas on top of the boat. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's what we do. We're just one hand, some sack of wops. And I was in the middle of the street. The whole time. Oh, where the telephone pole is. I was with the telephone pole. I'm like, you were there late? What's up, buddy? What's going on? A little traffic, huh? Future champ. <laughs> what's going on? Pleasure. How you doing? Pleasure. Great to meet you. Paulie, what's your name? All right. You're Tom Core. Nice to meet you, Tom. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, Come on with yeah. it. Get Come down. What we want to do tonight is just kind of stay in the public eye. It's the biggest fight of his career coming up, so you know, want to make sure everybody you know sees him and there's a lot of media there. So they, they usually have a ball with him because he, he doesn't shut up for two seconds when the, when the media is around. BoxingTalk.com, we here at the Hammerstein Report. The Magic Man Malinaji, the Magic Man. Paulie Malinaji getting defeated Junior Welterweight getting ready for his big fight on June 10th. June 10th, Madison Square Garden. Biggest fight of your life by far. Tell us about it. Do you feel more pressure than you felt heading into any fight or it's just another night for Paulie? Hey man, you know, it, it's business is business and I got to handle my business come June 10th. You start boxing for these opportunities and uh, to get a world title fight, I'm going to take that title June 10th. I don't feel a lot of pressure just because I always look at every single fight like it's the biggest fight of my career. I'm the kind of fighter that steps up to the plate. I'm going to dice him up, cut him up, break him up. I'm going to beat him that badly. I'm looking forward to it, and I'm looking forward to putting on a, the, the greatest performance of my career, painting my masterpiece on that night. On June 10th, this gentleman will be fighting Kodo at Madison Square.
its way through small circles. Here today, gone tomorrow, and who's gonna know? Is this hand still gonna be shaken? Will this back still be padded when hair's gone gray? Will there still be warmth and passerby smiles? Oval faces blurred, fans no longer beguiled. This uh, animal called Kodo, hitting the floor, and getting his body ready, getting his mind ready. The past week and a half, Paul, he's been here working out with him, and he's been doing tremendous. I've been putting him in a little spar just to get his body ready to get to, to get beat on a little bit. We toughen him up, toughen his skin up. We, we, we scheduled the boxing day with a French kid from France. And Paul, he should do real good with him, though. Don't look like he's wearing box of briefs right now, this fruitcake bastard. Double up on the jab, triple up on the jab. Keep me um, Cole is a hard puncher, so, you know, we don't want to get hit too much, but also you want to get your body hardened up for that type of fight. You know, it could get, it could get rough at times. It's very important to get his mind focused on what he's doing, to get his hands sharp. What I mean sharp, to get the punches out. Move. Oh, God. Jesus Christ. Keep going there. Just keep hitting it and go. Hit and go. Put two, three down there. What? What? Keep doing it again. Don't pull up. Don't pull up. Doing the dookie move. Right hand. Yeah, I know. So beautiful. You learned how to cook a guy. You had to cook this guy. There. You got him now. He's through. He's cooked. He's a goose. So we cooked him. And then we, we took him to dinner. Yeah. Woo! There you go. Beautiful. I don't like him just to box with guys that look like Kodo or fight like Kodo. I like a little everything because you never know what another guy going to do or what he got in his bag. That's why when Kodo does something, we'll be ready for it. They say I can't punch you. Wear the pressure down, bro. You do, man. The more you come, the more you get hit. Eventually, it takes a toll. Everybody. They got to make that decision. When they get knocked out, they want to stay and close up and lose the decision. Most guys take the decision because they don't want to hit with the H. Yeah. Because he kept coming and coming and coming. Eventually, you get worn down. Those were fight gloves, if those were fight gloves, he would have got knocked out. For sure. For sure. So we're ready to go. We're going to leave tomorrow. Polly, myself, and uh, Billy Giles and Pete, and the rest of the camp's going to come up on uh, Sunday. We're going to Boston. He'll be more focused up there. They have more rest. They have more time to himself. We'll have his farm partners there. He'll eat correct. He'll watch his weight more more decisively than he would here. And he won't have nobody bothering. The whole thing is distractions. But the guy to get his mind focused. Yeah, right here. Because you know it's coming from the chair. Make him come in. Make him come in. Make him come in. Make him come in. Keep him in the circle. Keep him in the circle. Left or right. Left or right. Keep him right here, everybody. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Wipe this, wipe this.
always been ready to train for home for years already. I'm always ready. Can't get fucking shit fucking places to train. Nobody knows what the fuck is going on. Mm-hmm. Right, fuck, three weeks to the fight, I need to focus now. I don't need to fucking worry about what the fuck is going on with camp every day. Because every day is a story. Hmm? No, this, this, this is... Camp, camp is not supposed to be when home is better than camp. You're supposed to have shit more ready in camp than you are at home, not the other way around. You know what I'm saying? Everything is perfect when I'm at home. I come to camp, something's always going wrong every day. It's not supposed to be like that when we're in camp. Alright? Shit is supposed to be right in camp. I, I'm, I, when I'm the fuck home, I train for fights, everything's perfect. I go to the gym every day, I get my naps, I get, I get my run at night, everything is fucking right on point like clockwork, dude. I come to camp, everything's always fucked up. Every fucking time. I'm fucking sick and tired of it. I'm going to fuck home, because I know I can concentrate on. So everybody telling me where I can concentrate, I know where I can concentrate. You know, he's getting excited. You know, it's just get to that point now that, you know, he wants to get this thing done. Everything gonna aggravate him right now because you know he figures he's home away from home. He can't handle sex. He's got to eat certain things. It all it, it just catches up, you know. You get your shit in. You just don't see it right now. Cause you just want to kill this son of a bitch. We all want to kill him. If he gets hit one time, this type of guy, he thinks everything went wrong. You landed a two-one on James. I think you're just looking at every little thing now and, and everything bothering you. Your right hand, there was nothing wrong with your right hand. I said good right hand 40 times, so from what you respond. You landed a 2-1, you landed a 1-2-1, you landed a 1-2, you, you landed a right uppercut. Well, I don't know what else, what else you want to land. Let's relax, sir. Let's relax. This won't be this way no more. So, you know, it's just a bad day for him. That's it. Everybody has them. No problem. You know, I no longer have to prove myself in this gym. I can come here and be very relaxed, be myself, as opposed to maybe training in other places where I feel like everybody's always watching me, see, oh, is this kid really as good as everybody says he is or something, you know? When I'm home, I don't have that pressure on me because everybody already supports me, everybody already knows I'm the real deal. So I can just concentrate more on training and focusing on what I gotta do. Freddie Soto is a smart opponent I've been back in New York. Um, he's uh, very much like Bodo. He has a hooking style, a dressing style, so uh, it works out perfect for me. And uh, I used to spar with Freddie when I was younger. I know Bodo for years. I used to spar with him when he was uh, an amateur, um, helping get ready for his Golden Glove bout against Darling Jimenez. I was uh, trying to give him the best advice I possibly could. But now he's, uh, he's running with it, and I'm proud of him. I've been working with Paulie now for about two and a half weeks. Um, just kind of putting pressure on him, giving him a simulation of what the fight might be like. With Kodo, who starts out fast and throws heavy punches. You just pick him apart with your jab. Then make him come. Then he's going to come because he got no choice. Why, why he's out there, just let him stay. He's waiting. Just jab him. He works really hard. He's always been a gym rat. He's dedicated. Uh, doesn't mess around. Hopefully, this hard work is going to pay off. You walk away with a title one. There'll be a lot of upset Puerto Ricans. <laughs> no need to cry or walk away in disgrace. Because you got to be tough for you to get first place. And it's only the best could ever take that space. So suck up the pain and put on your game face. No need to cry or walk away in disgrace. Because you got to be tough for you to get first Nobody said that the game was ever easy, but looking at your eyes, I can hear you say, please be. Even if we quit, that would do nothing but please me. You have a loud bark, but you still sound cheesy. Never had a break, but I still pay my dues. Struggle puts you in a place where you really have to choose. Do I go all out and give it just enough so I don't lose? Check your heart at the door, because it just might lose. Who's time is it?
anyway, working without any pay. Hope they find you on eBay, move it over any day. Point four on the clock, but you still hit the trade. Nobody has it on lock while it's still in play. Second chances don't come a dime a dozen, but you gotta take chances if you wanna win. Something set your sights higher, and you might get a little more. At least something better than a little stuff you had before. No need to cry, walk away in disgrace, cause you gotta be tough for you to get first place. And it's only the best you can ever take that space. So suck up the pain and put on your game face. I'm Ivelis Rivera. I work for Oil Newspaper here in New York. I'm from Puerto Rico. And I've also been covering Miguel Cotto for a lot. I hear him a little different than the other fights that he have before. I hear him like a little, I don't know if angry or mad. He's all pissed off there. He's all pissed off at you, right? He's not usually to talk a lot. Uh, in that press conference, he speaks a little more than the usual, so... He's going to be even more pissed off after I whoop his ass. <laughs> Wait till I whoop his ass. You think he's pissed now? Wait till after I whoop his ass. I mean, this is a typical crowd at final press conference. What does the champ's supposed to look like? The real big event of the week, followed by the weigh-in on Friday. Back to basis, commercialized catastrophe. Break it down, see how it sounds, it's how it has to be. Naturally, originality is a reality. To some, it's a formality. To others, technicality. Can you reiterate to everyone what becoming the junior welterweight champion of the world means to you? It means proving a lot of the naysayers wrong, a lot of the doubters wrong, and it, it means also uh, stepping up to the level that I know I already belonged on. Skills are going to pay the bills here. He thinks his power is going to make a difference. Believe me, his brain's in there, my man. It ain't just power. You need a lot more than heart and power to beat Paulie Malonji. He's going to find that out the hard way Saturday. It's not a fight he's going to win. I get no credibility because the latest shapes of things that I got no ability is killing me. Can you buy a clue and recognize potential I possess for second guess intent of rhymes? Believe me, man, he's not gonna land. You know, people think he's gonna walk into leather all night. At the end of the day, that's what you're gonna see all night. And I don't wanna hear Miguel Cordon look like himself. I don't wanna hear, oh man, you know what? He took him lightly. I don't wanna hear he couldn't make the weight. You're gonna see Miguel Cordon trying to get off, and he's not gonna be able to get off. Just like everybody else that fights Paul Malanaji, you can't get your hands off because I get my hands off first each and every time. Visualize the way the game's attended Some can reprimand the wisdom fallacies pretended I get offended when I see the clones and frauds Mesmerize the crowd, see I'm expected still apart I expect Cordo to try to come out fast um, And then uh, realize that he's not going to be able to hit me And um, I expect Cordo to try to, um, you know, try to knock me out like he says he's going to try to So, um, you know, I, I expect to frustrate him and, and like I said, after a few rounds of the fight He's going to realize this is not a fight he's going to win oh, it's not about I'm tougher than you or I'm stronger than you or this and that. It's about you simply realize I'm a better fighter. And when you realize that you're in with a better fighter, there's nothing you can do. No, then no matter how much heart you got, you can't win the fight. No matter how much strong you are, you can't win the fight. You know? And so that's when that's gonna be the same situation for him as it was for everybody else. Well there's a little bit of an argument about the way in because Kodo's people have scheduled the way in very early which gives him more time to make weight and more time to gain weight. The way it should be the day of the fight. I think it makes the fight more equal for both guys. I think it makes the weight closer. This weigh-in is going to be like almost 36 hours before, so you can expect that Cotto's probably going to be a giant when he walks into the ring. Miguel Cotto is not a fighter on the same skill level with Paul Malachi, so uh, they can weigh in whenever they want. Uh, I know, like I said, my team made a big deal out of that, and it's their job, you know, if they want to, you know, try to make it later, but Miguel Cotto can weigh in when he wants. It doesn't matter. Yeah, I'll put it to you like this, man. When I was growing up, I got into a lot of fights, man. I was always a little kid. This box is the only place where uh, weight classes matter, all right? Uh, pretty much, I've always fought bigger people. I've gotten into fights with bigger people. And in the gym, we always box with bigger people anyway. So it's not, a, it's not a, as big a disadvantage as people would think. The future 40-pound champion, Paulie yeah. Amatch. Man, this water tastes good. <laughs> you want some? No, you can't have any for a couple of days. So <laughs> I'll put it back then. <laughs> uh, um, listen, I've done a lot of talking over the course of this fight. I've um, had a lot of fun doing it, and I'm looking forward to winning the title on Saturday night. Um, I'm in great shape, uh, probably the best shape of my career. Kodo has tried to portray himself as a nice guy, and he's kind of been, you know, not talking too much. But uh, I picked up a Latino paper a few weeks ago, and I see this, this guy saying he's going to knock me out in a few rounds. Now, as most of you know who've seen me fight, I'm not the easiest target to hit. But if any of you know me personally, 
you don't fan the flames when you're playing with Paulie Malignaggi. So when you're making statements like that, you're putting yourself in trouble. He can't get his hand, wait to get his hands on me. I'm counting the seconds to Saturday night till I can't get, wait to get my hands on this guy. And I hope he knows that. I hope he understands that. He also said that um, before the promotion, he didn't know too much about me or he didn't know about me. So he said, well, let me tell you a little bit about myself, man. They call me the magic man. Saturday night, I got a few, I got a few tricks for you. got a little glimpse of what I'm going to see tomorrow, but that's just a little fraction of how bad it is going to be tomorrow. That crowd's going to be pretty heavy. Billy, well, Billy, what he said, he didn't want to watch any more tapes because he said they called him yesterday. He was on ESPN class. He's like, nah, I got to say, I'm going to see him enough in the next couple of days. I'm going to see him tomorrow night at the win, and then Saturday, I'm going to see him on the canvas. He's going to be like the Mona Lisa, <laughs> right on the canvas. <laughs> you know, like, a, like a painting. That's exactly right. Well, really everybody in the family you know, is excited about the fight, Eight, right? you know? It's the main thing. I mean, how could you not be, you know? My brother's fighting for the world title. You know, it's my uncle's nephew who's fighting for the world title. We've got some of our best friends over here. This is big to us, you know? This is what my brother's future is, you know? So it's just, we're just getting a glimpse and a taste of his future right now. Hey, uh, Joe, uh, quick toss. The quick toss. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, to bigger, better day. Paulie, Paulie, to, to victory. But more importantly, to good health and to, and to give, give it 110%. All right? Cheers. Cheers. Salute. And new. And new. Well, I think these two young men are eager to have at it.
the two-time and current Puerto Rico Fighter of the Year, the undefeated WBO Junior Welterweight Champion of the World, Miguel Cotto. What was going through my mind is the bell rings. I realized that the ring is small, so the original game plan was to move around the ring for the first few rounds and really have him chasing me. Seeing the ring was so small, I decided at the last minute to change the game plan and say, I'm gonna hit him and smother him or hit him and hold him just so, so he can't get leverage on his punches. Wrong plan, backfires. 15 seconds into the fight, I get hit by trying to smother him and I'm cut. Well, there's already a cut at the corner of the left eye of Malinaji. Bunch heads apparently in that very first uh, moment that they came together. At first, I didn't really realize I was caught, but something was getting in my eye, and then I realized after a few seconds that it was my own blood. And the next clench, I saw it all over Miguel's shoulder, and I said, man, I'm caught pretty bad. It seems like he's more intent on trying to end it because he's worried about the cut. Yeah, and that could be dangerous. Right. Yeah. People in your corner, they can work on the cut. That was a bad cut. That was like a gash. I was kind of freaking to see it. I remember, I remember seeing him in that situation, the blood dripping down. Because the guy sees your blood, he's coming out. In the Malinaji corner. And the cut men are going to have to go quickly to work there. Let's see where it is exactly. Right at that moment, I said to myself, oh shit, maybe this night is over. Just very calmly here to start the second round. The key is going to be how well is the corner of Malinaji able to control that cut. But now, a little bit of panic sets in because you know, they can stop fights on a cut. And uh, if it is an accidental headbutt cut, they go to the scorecards. So now I'm telling myself I need to stay ahead on the scorecards. And since Miguel Cotto has the big name, they may give him the early rounds just on his name. So now I'm thinking I can't just sit back and box. I may need to attack him. You don't want to go in with a master boxer like Melanaji and just get wrecked, try to get him recklessly without your defense. You got to keep your hands up. I'm looking and I'm like, watching, watching. Paulie's like in his little groove, you know. We got him now. Don't worry, you know, we got out of the first round. It was kind of crazy, but now we got him. that I remember about the knockdown was the crowd roared again. The crowd was a, an immense roar just heard, I heard from the crowd and I was like, well, I'm down. I gotta get up right away. You know, uh, you know they were waiting for that moment and w when there's a knockdown in a fight like that, believe me, you'll know you're down, man. They remind you, they went crazy. Basically the worst possible start I could have had in, a ch world ch in my world championship fight has now happened and it's up to me to turn it around because like I said before, I've trained my whole life for that moment. I wasn't going to fold. Alanaji comes out, lands the first punch. But when he started turning the fight around, that was really exciting for me to watch. I felt like, you know, he could still win this thing. Danny and Frankie by like their pants and I'm like sitting there like ah, ah. 
him, we got him, we got him. And you see Paulie just tag him. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. Cannot take a break with Melanagia. No. Cannot take a break. You think you've beaten him? There's nothing left. Just step, make a step backwards, he'll follow you. And he's staying right on top of Coach Almeida. I certainly did not expect this style of a fight from Melanagia. <laughs> Melanagia just looked over at us and raised his eyebrows. I think he was thinking, what am I doing? That moment in the ninth round, I wind up hurting him, and uh, he does a little wobble, and the crowd just erupts. They started thinking, you know what? Paulie's gonna pull this one off. Paulie's starting to tag him now. Paulie's starting to tag him. I remember he hits him with a one, two. Boom, boom. He stopped it because of the tape. The tape came loose on Paulie's glove, and the ref stops it. He says, time. You can see Paulie frustrated going like this, like, come on, come on, do the tape already. And the whole time, Paulie's looking at him like, I got you, motherfucker, I got you. Cheekbone puffed out even more. They tried to use the M swell on it and just... Man, it's definitely small. Coda. Ooh, one left hook. Criticize Cotto for the fight going this long. But yeah. they won't. They're going to have to praise Melanagi. What a tough guy. The 11th round was not a good round for me. I was starting to break down. I was swallowing a lot of blood. What a fight. He starts bleeding inside. The doctor, of course, is concerned. Keeps coming over to the corner, looking, looking, and I'm saying, oh, he's fine, he's fine, he's fine. When deep down inside, I'm like, oh, fuck, what are we doing? What are we doing right now? What are we going to do? I just remember thinking in the 12th round, can I do this? Can I knock this kid out in this round? No, no, he can't wait to get off the chair. He wants to be out there going for it. 12th and final round. He's got everything to be proud of here. Well, I would pay to come back and watch Melanagi against anybody because that's right. He gives you the effort. He's got a lot of skill. I totally agree. And he has uh, certainly uh, earned any acclaim he gets as a result of this performance, win or lose. The world title fight and an opportunity like this might not come again. So if I want to achieve my goal and achieve my dreams, the crowd's roaring. They're waiting for it. I got to do it now. Under a minute to go in the fight. Now Coach Elwood. What a exchange of combinations there. Finishing up strongly here in the final seconds of the fight. Boy, these guys are going to sleep tonight. Left to the face of Malinaji. Blood streaming now from the cut in the eye. The nose, his mouth, his cheeks swollen. And he's still throwing. Fifteen seconds left. such a fight. Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds of action, we have a unanimous decision. Here are the score totals. Judge Brinkside, Don Trella, scores about 115 to 112. Judges Peter Trevatera and Glenn Feldman both score them out 116 to 111 all three in favor of the winner and still champion the pride of Palmas Puerto Rico Miguel Cuoco I remember his, his team picking him up and he had the belt and um, it was just disappointing man it was disappointing standing in the ring and, and hearing and still you know world champion Miguel Cotto okay let's go back up to okay let's go back up to ringside and Wally Matthews with Polly 
Thanks, Tim. You know, after a fight like this, you don't want to call anybody a loser. Let's just say Paulie Malignaggi finished second to Miguel Cotto tonight. Now, right in the beginning of the fight, you pretty much got taken out of your fight plan with the headbutt. What was going through your mind at that point? Yeah, I've never been caught like that. Um, I think maybe I panicked a little bit. I'm not going to make no excuses, though, man. You know, I, I didn't know, you know, I, I wasn't sure, like, what was going to happen in the fight. You know, I, I, the blood started getting in my eye first, and I started to panic. And they cleaned it up as the fight went on. But, like, I think I, the knockdown caused me because I was thinking too much about one thing. But you know, they, they I, I take my hat off to Miguel, man. You know, I'm not a sore sport. I talk a lot of trash, but, you know, he beat me fair and square. And I'm not going to make no excuses, you know? Oh, the first time I saw my face on the monitor when I was doing the interview, I was like, whoa, I was like, this is, I remember thinking, this is pretty bad, huh? The right side of your face is very swollen. I mean, yeah, obviously, you can't tell. Yeah, what it is. What you, I didn't had no idea people were saying during the fight that my jaw was broken, my nose was broken. No, what do you, what do you, I, I does it feel like it's I, broken? I can move my jaw. Yeah. I, I'm fine. I, uh, maybe it's just swollen, you know? It hits pretty hard, like I said, so it's probably swollen from the punches. But I don't think anything's broke, because I don't think I'll be able to move it, and I don't, I don't think I'll be able to talk if it was broke, but... You know, it's. Uh, I don't know if anything can stop you from talking, man. <laughs> but, hey, man, I'm so disappointed, man. I wanted I, to win so bad. But, well, if it's know, any man. consolation to you, you fought a tremendously courageous fight. People here appreciated it very, very much. Everybody else would have put their tail between their legs and left. You got more high and more balls than anybody in this sport. Performance, courageous performance. When I started writing my rhymes, I felt the need to stay real. Nobody wants to hear a wench and pop up shells. He's peeling for them, can't help. Oh, we got to go to the bank. I'm going to go to the shade with the trays. It's like the rush I get when someone fucks in my shit. That rush of confidence. When I'm at the end of my wits and head all I can stand, some mouthy faggots trying to pretend. He's a walking psychopath when he's with all of his strength. The time for talking is lost. That goes off. My rationality is the whiskey shots. Burn up all my stupid talent. It's me. a lot of poly mile and you believe me. Oh, yeah. The crowd has really spurred him on here. 
And, you know, Mark Nodge is feeling it. He knows he's the champion. He's acting like a champion. He's finishing his fight like a champion, too. This is what you call closing the show. Very important for, for, for a fighter to close the show. Give these fans what, what they want. Great fight by Paddy Marjanaji. Marjanaji. Good fight. Ecstatic. His corner's ecstatic. He's ecstatic. Very happy man. It's ecstasy. <laughs> For the new IBF Junior Welterweight Champion of the World.